Season 5, Episode 5, Hosts and Goblins. All the little ghoulies on Halloween Eve, Trixie and Mixie and Halloween Steve. Hey guys, do you think this is a real song, or is Mr. Goliath just making it up as he goes? Halloween Eve is a mighty big treat. Halloween legs and Halloween feet. Oof. Yes, Goliath, I know that's your favorite part. I don't believe I've ever heard the name Mixie before. Surely this is an invention of our gracious host. Well now, Mr. Rochester, I would be inclined to agree. But take a look at this little song book on Mr. Goliath's piano stand. Halloween Steve's Tedious Carols for Children. Copyright Z Ought O Two. Huh. Not exactly a contender for the hit parade, is it? Oh, ah. Breakfast is ready, gang. I've got smoked sausages and gravy, biscuits, and fresh booberry jam. That's right, Rebels. A lovely repast for your Halloween Eve breakfast. You'll need your strength for all your intrepid endeavors today. Wow, this looks amazing. I feel kind of bad that you guys have been in there cooking since the crack of dawn. It's okay, Nita. Didn't you look at the KP chart? You get to do all the dishes. The KP chart? Kitchen Patrol. We all have to take turns. See, it's on this poster board. The stickers were my idea. Not to be rude, Chip and Mr. Goliath, but I'm not going to have time to do Kitchen Patrol today. You hear that, Nita? That means Goliath is going to get all of your stickers on his row. Fair deal. Yes, Chip. Benita Belfry and I are going to proceed to the secret location so the Rebels can rehearse going to Earth for fright power. With Roostifer's ban on our traditional trick-or-treat activities, we're going to need every tool at our disposal to best him. Uh, knock-knock. Everybody decent in here? Well, if it isn't our noble lawman coming to check in on the team. Hello, Sheriff. Would you like to join us for Halloween Eve breakfast? Well, now you know. You know, if you got enough, you know I'm... I'm (laughs) Mm, Goliath's going to fix you a plate. Anyway, back to what we were saying. Uh, I'm not thrilled that we have to use the infamous Batsinger loophole to do this, but here we are. And Chip, I'm not going to yell at you anymore. I said my piece last night about you're going over to Company Holler today to try to talk sense into Roostifer. I just want you to be careful. I will be. Chip, careful, clearly. Uh, or careful, Chip, clearly. Which one sounds better? Whoa, 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 now. Hang on, Chipperoo. You going over to that company holler and talk to that old Roostifer? What if he makes you work in the mines, son? You know how they got them straw men? Uh, what if they keep you from leaving or turn you into a country rock critter or something like that? Two of those three things are real possibilities, Chip. I have an idea. I believe the sheriff should accompany you, Chip. Perhaps his presence can curb your innate impulsivity. Now that's a fine idea. Sheriff's a good man. He's going to keep your head on straight. Sure thing, guys. You know I'd love some company. All right, all right. Going to keep an eye on him, y'all. Good man. Okay, so you two are going to company holler. Fred and Minerva are at the convenience store calling in all of our reinforcements for tomorrow. And me, Ruddy, and Belfry are heading over to the secret location. Are we about ready? Who's driving? Oh, no, I don't drive. Rochester, how about you do us the honors? Shotgun. I drive rather slowly but I'm willing to volunteer my services. I can drive. Shotgun. Shall we proceed, Trixie and Mixie? After you, Halloween Steve. (laughs) Steve. Y'all in Cattle Holler. (laughs) Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. Welcome to, welcome to Boo Cool, Boo Cool, Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Colonel Holler, Colonel Holler. Welcome to your afterlife. (laughs) Welcome to the Company Holler Pig.
Picnic, hosted by Rooster for J. Batsinger. Please enjoy a perfunctory sack lunch, then report immediately to a straw man for your next assignment. <sighs> Call this a picnic. You don't even got no good sandwiches. Talking about some old boiled tongue and a piddly old apple. Yeah, I was expecting something a little peppier. Like a three-legged race, body bag race, egg and spoon race, some kind of race. Chip clearly. I thought I might see you at the company luncheon. Is this not grand? I ain't even got no good sandwich. I don't think you've met Bones Malone. He's my uncle. Boy, we're the same age. And you come to apologize for kidnapping young Percy and perhaps ask for the return of your boutique? Uh, we do want the boutique back, and we were hoping we could talk about some other stuff as well. But I assumed when Percy returned the vault to me that you had seen my proposal and wished to convey your displeasure. Well, yeah, we saw you pretty much want to zoop over everything in town, but I thought, hoped, that I might convince you to be less crappy. Uh-huh, of course, Chip. If your red carnations had come to see me as intended, instead of breaching the vault by some kind of wickedness, I would have explained that my proposal was only a starting point for negotiations. You watch out, Chipperoo. That's Batsinger talk. You can see it in them yellow eyes. Okay, so what can we do to save our Halloween spirit? Well, Chip, I'll tell you what I'm after. The whole reason for all this here, the company, the workers, is for me to retire to Earth in comfort with Percy, Big Mama, and a few members of my inner circle. To accomplish these aims, I am prepared to zoop over what's left of Kirtle Hollow. Yes, it will zoop away, I'm afraid, but I would leave behind all of Company Hollow and everyone inside. Nope, we done. Rebellion. I call rebellion. Now wait for the rest. There's more. Mm-hmm. Cause now, Chip, you and I can work together. You not like that big bosom boss woman. We have a rapport. Kind of. No, you ain't. I come to know you and trust your instinct. So in my absence, when I leave to Earth, I would like you to run Company Holler, however you please. Watch over your own people, but keep the fright power flowing to me on the other side. And we done. Mm-mm. Enjoy your terrible sandwiches. Come on, Chip. What is the alternative? You know this rebellion is futile. If the Red Car Nations attack, my straw man army will respond, and yet I hope that can be avoided. Instead, let us have peace. Why not enjoy some leverage in this new reality? Maybe. Oh, heck. You done lost your mind, son. Yes. Now, let us discuss Chip Clearly's version of Company Holler. I think one more pull will do it. Well, now, I would hope so. Y'all got me dangling out this little cave window like a woolly booger fly. This is undignified. I may have to take a short rest before our next attempt to pry Belfry from the cave ledge, Benita. My elderly bones shriek at such exertions. Okay, take five, Roddy. I've got it. Let me just take off my shoes real fast. Belfry, I'm going to drape your arms over my shoulders like this. Uh, Hold on tight. Balance now. And... Oh. <laughs> rocks up in here. Good lord. I feel like an old balloon after a pugilist shindy. Benita, sometimes I forget about your uncanny ability to leverage force with your frame. You would make a very efficient grave digger. That's the plan. Okay, finally, here we are at the secret location. Rustifer's weird shack deep in the mine. Well... I certainly am grateful that Chip clearly used his geology expertise to find us a secret entrance to this portion of the mine. I sure do wish, however, that he had warned us that my bulky behind might be a little too large for the opening. Yeah, I don't think any of us were accounting for our big behinds when we decided to come back here. Well, now that our behinds are unharmed and inside the cave, I believe that we can proceed with our plan. I don't hear anyone nearby. Company Holler must have long ago excavated all the fright ore in this area. Belfry, you are absolutely sure that this is where we have to go to do the loophole to Earth? It is, and I believe I see it right over here in this cranny. There's a crack in the cave floor that will take you right over to Earth. Oh! Okay, this whole time when we've been saying it's a loophole, I thought we meant it was a way of breaking the rules without breaking the rules. But this is actually a hole. 
Yes, the loophole is a teeny tiny portal that connects the ether and loops around to a specific location in the Earth realm. However, does one use it? What you do is you crouch down and squish yourself small in your mind, and you think about hurtling yourself over to Earth. If you catch the vortex breeze and think small, it'll work. I've never been through myself, but we all know my daddy did. Okay, and here's the second part of this loophole thing. The transformation. We all know that we can go to Earth tomorrow, and even if we use the loophole, we'll still be ourselves because it's Halloween. But today, when we go through... You will be transformed. You'll look like a person, but like an odd Charlie. Something off about you people won't be able to put a finger on. You're forgetting the most important consideration, Belfry. The more forceful one's supernatural ego is, the more that person will distort when they transform into Earth form. This much is known. Plain and simple citizens have always been chosen for this rare and unusual task. It's why Pumpkin was our Earth champion for the Apocalypse Portal those five Halloweens ago. You remember, Belfry, the Apocalypse Portal? Won't ever let me live that down. Okay, so let's call Pumpkin and have him go through. He knows the drill. Pumpkin has been through many trials since his first sojourn to the Earth Rim. He has leveled up, so to speak. He has grown from a pitiful baby to a... Powerful baby? I don't believe it would be advisable at this time. Okay, well, who do we know who's kind of simple? I go. I do it. <laughs> and I'll cheer you on! Ha! Yes, thank you, Ring Toss. That's very supportive. Are you sure you want to do it, Apple Bob? I feel a little weird about this. I do it. Yeah, I do. I'm not important. Uh-huh. Rochester, gut check. Is this okay sending Apple Bob through the Earth loophole? He'll be okay, right? Benita, we perform this deed in service of the town. Apple Bob is a willing subject. Let us let him try. <laughs> try. Okay, you remember the instructions? Think yourself small now, and then imagine yourself going to Earth. Crawl down in this here little cranny. Yeah, here we got a lovely little nook. Think tiny. Go Earth. Ready, Apple Bob? I do. Show him, boy. You can okay, do it. Okay, good Apple luck, Bob. Apple Bob. There you go, Bob. Your skinny self going through. What was the bill? There, there, there you go. Good luck, good on you, Bob. I never noticed this before. Enter at your own risk. Must be at least as tall as this pickaxe to ride. Ah! Mr. Clearly. <sighs> Apologies for the quietude of my wing flaps, but I couldn't help but notice you admiring the new mine coaster. While your friend the sheriff is in the privy, why not let me take you for a droll little spin? A mine coaster? Yes, it's a marvel of excavation and fast motion construction. Your beloved company monsters have been working their talents to the knuckle for its completion. You simply must honor their hard work by taking a ride of appreciation. Well, I suppose it would be rude not to, though I'm not sure if I've ever been in a situation before where it would be rude to ride a roller coaster, so I'm a little stuck. I'm also slightly nervous in case he couldn't tell. I see the mine carts are the roller coaster. Oh boy, oh boy, we are committed now. Chip, I know how much you love the dulcet and ethereal tones of our computed singer, Nelly Nebula. I don't remember saying that. Nelly, while I'm securing our guest in this here minecart roller coaster, engineered for his benefit, would you be so kind as to pop in that song I prepared through our many speakers shaped like rocks? I appreciate all the trouble you've gone to. Why, it's no trouble at all. It's as easy as rolling up to the top of the tunnel and letting out a little whee! Sir, you really don't need to pull out all the stops. Who's pulling out all the stops? Who's got you off the beaten track? So rocks do better under pressure where little pebbles crack. I'm spitting out all the grit. I'm sifting out all the glory. With this permit, I admit you clearly you're my glory. 
This roller coaster in the mine is swooping awfully fast, and I can't think straight at the moment. But I have to tell you, sir, that I'm just not comfortable at the thought of taking over this mine. And I'm still pretty sure you weren't supposed to have this whole mining operation in the first place. As we round another bend, I'm trying to make you comprehend there is no mine. What? Just hours. All the workers? No, just hours and hours of working in the mine. Well, that's not great. There is no yours. Why? Take off to why it's ours. Hours in mine assure me everybody's feeling fine. There is no why in mining. There's two. That's right. There's too many people flapping their mouth who don't know what they're talking about. But lay the charms of they'll explode. I know I've struck the mother low. You might just be a lump of coal, but I can make you shine with the prospect of a new life in the mine. Now we're passing the furnace and stacking the ingots. All this could be yours. Pass the munch. Eyeball. Tar. Mandrake sift. <laughs> it's very hot. I don't feel so well. We're at the top of the hill. I'll get a breeze on you. Here we go. Whee! This could be yours. I thought there was no yours, just ours. Yes, hours and hours of working in the mine. Again, not great. There is no mine, except for this part, which is mine. Wait, hours and mine assure me our ambitions intertwine. There is no you in winning attitude. There is. There is a me and you, I see. A chip off the old block. Agree? And you'll see how it will all pan out with your new and diamond difference clock. It's sedimentary, you see, and thus I will opine. There's a prospect of a new life in the golden splendid true life in the prospect of a new life in the Well, how was that? I think I might throw up. Excuse me. <sighs> so dizzy. Don't look at the sandwiches, Chip. You can make it to the bathroom. Just close your eyes. Keep walking. Whoa! Hey. Sorry, sir. I didn't see you there. Let me help you pick up this mountain of sack lunches you were carrying all by yourself. Chip Clearly, is that you? Oh, Miss Weaver, sorry. All I could see was your droopy little hat over those paper bags. I thought you were a straw man. I'm a spider wearing a sun hat, Chip. Now come on, what are you doing here? Were you singing about the virtues of the mine? Oh, heard that, did you? I was trying to convince your boss to ease up around here and maybe let everybody have Halloween, but it's complicated. Did you say Halloween is tomorrow? Already? Yeah. Uh, the sheriff's here too, except he came down with irritable bat singer syndrome and had to visit the OK Corral. I was heading over here to check on him. OK, TMI, but you're very kind. I see some things haven't changed. You got all those sack lunches, a little itinerary. I will assume you put this whole picnic together for the company. Yes, I'm the chair spider of sanctioned social events for Company Holla. And I'm also the best worker. I don't even count my mining points anymore. And do you like it here? Well, I wake up, I harvest the fried ore, even though I already have all the country rock critters and I feel like somebody would be jealous, but I can't remember who. Ms. Weaver, I think you might be working too hard. I think I tried to leave the other day, but it didn't work for some reason. Wait a minute. I remember I was angry because... Excuse me, excuse me. Time for a shift in the mines. Come on. Sorry, Chip. Duty calls. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Miss Weaver. What is it, Chip? You said somebody was jealous. Okay, and? Was it Tarantula? It was Tarantula. Ooh. Keep walking. Hush, I'm trying to remember something and feeling spirited. Okay. Well, we definitely won't be doing that again today. Benita. I know you're upset about the troubles with the Earth loophole, but let us try to look on the bright side of the coffin lid. He's right, Miss Von Wingenkamp. The loophole did work now. 
Yeah, it worked. It worked and Apple Bob came out on the other side of the Earth portal looking just like a very famous criminal who was very wanted by the police. Everybody yelling be mean at Apple Bob said I'd come back. I am so sorry. Why don't you sit down here on this barrel and collect yourself, Apple Bob? As a token of our sincere esteem, please accept this emergency blanket and this paper cup of apple juice. Heh, <laughs> apple. Yeah, so Earth loophole is not happening again today. We need a new plan. That's why y'all call Problem Solving Pumpkin. I don't know why y'all didn't call me sooner. Mm. I got this Ouija board I done been talking to Earth on. Ah, yes. Pumpkin Spirit Board. A convenient means of communicating with the Earth realm. If he can find an audience so inclined to listen. I told y'all I got friends I've been talking to. This brings up a second possibility for exploring the Earth realm if y'all are feeling cold on the loophole. I always heard tell you can get there with your ethereal form if you have a willing vessel to inhabit. A willing vessel? You mean like possess people? I do it all the time. Pumpkin, why didn't you ever say? Cause y'all ain't ask me. Ugh. Okay, do you think like four of your Ouija board friends would be willing to be possessed so we can zoop over and check out what's happening over on Earth? Um, I don't believe I relish the thought of gazing through the dim eyes of an Earth rube. Perhaps one of us should stay back and watch over the three of you as you commune with the mortals. I'll admit I got a morsel of curiosity kicking up in me about all this. Might be fun to go strutting around as an Earthman. Okay, let's try it. How do we do it? Everybody gather around my Ouija board and calm your mind. Okay. Next step, let me guess. Hold your hand? Well, you don't have to, but you can. Let us join hands and commune with the delightful spirits. When the spirit realm calls, we answer. Spirit, we are listening. Okay, Bumpkin, here's what you can have it say. Hey, my friend is always talking to you guys and possessing you apparently. I have no idea why he never told us, but whatever. But anyway, I was wondering if three of you would be willing to let us possess you real quick. Do you hear that, friends? On the night when we have the fabulous world-renowned artist Pierre St. Dare attending our fabulous party full of beautiful people from the art world, the spirit realm has charged us with a magical task. Hmm, spiritual possession? This will be interesting indeed. I shall be an embodied work of art, taking in death like a fresh canvas takes in paint. Tell us more, O oh spirit. Okay, Bumpkin, have it say, we promise we won't do anything weird if we have your bodies. We just want to look around Earth real quick to check on something our arch enemy is doing. Um, Spirit, are you okay? You seem less commanding than you usually are. Okay, that was rude. I don't want to be rude, Earth weirdos, but can we please walk around in your bodies? No wait, Pumpkin, let me erase that last part where I call them rude. Let us possess you, please. Oh, yes. I love Spirit, it. we accept your request. Let us prepare for metamorphosis. Spirit, we, we are, are ready. ready. Now hold still, Percy. You got snail grease all over your chin. Let me go. I want to chomp at the workers. I think you missed a spot on his bow tie. Hey, what's he doing here? He tried to boss me around. Go on, Percy. Don't let me hear about your foolishness. Percy was going to be my replacement after Belfry failed to grab the bat's ring. Yeah, but... He sure did try. A disappointment. Nothing achieved in his lackluster tenure. But here you come along to get my affairs in chip shape. Okay, slow down. We're just talking right now. Yes, let us talk to the board members of Company Holler. Well, wait a minute. I told the sheriff I wouldn't make any decisions without talking to him first. 
That's fine, Chip. We're just talking right now. But the board members, they're going to want to know you're the kind of man they can trust to keep the fraught power flowing to their earthly interests. Okay, but we're just talking. There he is, Christopher Coffins, owner and publisher of the Evening Ghost newspaper. Oh, hey, I love those comic strips. Especially the one with that guy whose head's just a bag of money. That's me. Now look here, Cryptopher. Chip is the man I told y'all about. He will maintain our future interest in the company. Well, I still have concerns. My concern is a job for my grandson. And is your grandson strong? Can he read? What is his main area of interest? Wrestling. Well, that's good. He can be in charge of, uh, well... Wrestling department? Yes, arm wrestling. Exactly. He can be manager of arm wrestling at Company Holler. Hmm. Chip, Maud Lynn is a world-class musician. When she was young, her performances won many drawing room ovations. Oh, Rooster Fur. These days, I leave the singing to Miss Nellie Nebula. Oh, yeah, she's something else. Oh, are you two an item? Should I look for a wedding announcement in the evening ghost newspaper? Probably not, as I'm promised to the queen of the rock people. Oh, <laughs> rock people? Roostifer, he's too much. Tell me, Chip, clearly. How will you motivate the workers when they tire of country rock critters? Well, I guess you can make new critters. They don't have to be country rock. They could be some other type of music, like classical, and maybe it has a Mozart wig? But as a geologist, you must know that country rock refers to the native rock of an area. And you have passed Chip Clearly's Country Rock Quiz. How about that, Kenny? Still getting them good marks in school. Did you know that country rock is not only a music genre, but may refer to the native rock of an area? Let me ask you a question. Do you recall that wonderful jingle to the old Spider Phaeton commercial? Oh, I think I saw that on BooTube. It was like, go, go, creepy crawly. Take a spider, not a trolley. This it is, is fine, fine, sure is handy. handy. Take, Take a, a drive, drive and have, have a shandy. shandy. That was fine, Chip. Real fine. You know, Mr. Batsinger, some of your workers seem really tired, and if I did agree to something, I'm definitely making some changes around here. Like, first of all, fine, we're gonna- Fine, Chip. Keep massaging the board while I check on Percy. By day's end, I wager everyone will vote us a prize pair. But- Oh, hey, Sheriff. How's the stomach? You look a little better. Oof, don't you worry about that, Chipperoo. I ain't gonna leave my partner out here alone with no bat singer and all them tricks and wiles they be trying. Now, be honest. You ain't made no decision while I was gone, did you? No, not yet. And you ain't saying nothing? No. Sheriff, do you think I'm doing the right thing by coming here? No, you ain't doing the right thing, boy. I done told you that. Okay, but what if I could do things different around here? Oh, okay, Belfry. Now that's how we start, but then you start a- Hi, right, gentlemen. Would you care for a swizzle of fog machine water? It's from my personal reservoir. No, no thanks. No, we good. I see many futures, and they look amazing for company holler. Say it, everyone, shall we tease the straw man? <laughs> no, oh, no, yeah. no, no, boys. Cryptopher, you are scammered on your drink. Oh, straw man! <laughs> Come, I dropped my cigar and can't possibly pick it up. <laughs> Here you go. Oops, I dropped it again. <laughs> Here you go. Oops, dropped it. Oh, come on now. Uh, careful. Drop. Leave that man alone. He ain't hurt nobody. I, I mean, you know, that I seen. Yeah, hey, you guys want to hear another car commercial? Oh beep, beep, down the street with the motor creep. Zilfrey, straw man doesn't care about anything. Serious straw man. Okay. What is your name, straw man? Uh... Have a good day. Do they not have names? They forget everything. 
and so will all the rest. Hush now, what? Cryptifer. Uh oh, what'd you say? That's enough, Cryptifer. No, what'd he say? Something about everybody gonna forget their own name? Roostifer will turn everyone here into a straw man. You really, Cryptifer? What? Oh, by God, so you heard that? You heard what that man just said? By God, by God, I mean, by God. And guess what? Nobody can leave the mines. Your mouth, Cryptifer. I think I tried to leave the other day, but it didn't work for some reason. Chip, this ain't right. No, it's not. I've been a fool, Sheriff. No, no, you was confused. But now you about to fix it, boy. Don't be so delicate, Mr. Clearly. Some people are supposed to be straw men. And we are meant to enjoy the finer things in the afterlife. You know, I may have been a fool, but you guys are a bunch of ghouls. There you go, boy. You tell him. Kurt will holler forever. Of course, we must tell Roostifer that Chip clearly is not our man for the company. You know what? Don't bother. I'll tell him for you. Me too. Kurt will holler forever. Pierre, congratulations on your new artistic triumph. Your new painting moves me to tears. Thank you. I use all the colors. Indeed you do. Genius. Salmon mousse crostini with sprouts and wine salt. Sure. Thank you. Blah, guys, am I just not used to earth food anymore? How is this weirder than what we eat in our Halloween afterlife town? You just need to refine your palate a bit, that's all. <clears throat> oh, never mind now. If you throw this slop out to the pigs, they'd send it back to the kitchen. Don't y'all embarrass me in front of my earth friends. I'm a famous. Excuse me, but is this the man of the hour? Hi, I'm Ransack Balderdash, investor in the arts and letters. It's me, Pierre St. Dare, famous painter. I also dabble in letters and coloring books. Hi, Ransack Balderdash, and you are? I'm Kale Summerland, art dealer. And I'm Antoine, appreciator of fine art. So wonderful to meet you all. I must say, Pierre, your tongue-in-cheek appropriation of commercial iconography is very reminiscent of Andy Warhol. Thank you for noticing. Andy Warthog is my best friend. I didn't realize. You'll have to introduce us. Here's my card. He got real long teeth. Psst, Belfry. Mm-mm. Call me Antoine. Antoine, we need to be able to leave this corner of the party if we want to find out anything about what Roostifer's doing on Earth. Pierre, darling, do you remember me? No. Yes, you must. Ravine de Radish from Blarvard? You simply must agree to a celebrity professorship at our institution. Well, well now, it's going to be hard to do that, seeing as how we can't shuffle three inches in any direction without being beset upon by a cloud of admirers of the great Pierre St. Dare. Okay, well, you're going to have to excuse me. I've got to go to the bathroom. Pumpkin, come on while we've got a chance. Okay, now, Woo, you about pull my arm off. And my name is Pierre. Ugh, Pierre, listen, would you be okay if Antoine and I went and did a little scouting around while you stay here at the party? That's fine, but first you gotta hold my papers. Honestly, Pierre, I'm very impressed that you didn't bring your papers into the bathroom with you. <laughs> what are these, anyway? I saw that ransack balderdash fella push these on our good friend Pierre. Kept talking about an investment opportunity. Now, you know I appreciate a good schmooze, but I find the bearing of these art people flagrantly distasteful. Huh. Riches await those who invest in creepy corners, an ultra-luxe resort made from the bones of an authentic Halloween town. Truly? The bones of an authentic Halloween town? Yes! This is like an investor packet for Earth people. This is what Roostifer is planning on doing to Curdle Holler. He's going to zoop over the whole town and get rich idiots on Earth to pay him big bucks to vacation there. That is so gross. Look at this map, Antoine. Let's go explore.
Now work till morning. Okay, okay. Worry about yourself, straw man. I know the drill. <coughs> hey, Miss Weaver. Ready for another long, dark night in the mines? Harvesting rocks to service our blind idolatry of country rock critters and the cheap rush of <coughs> blingo <coughs> tchotchkes? <coughs> Pastor Munch, are you unwell? Yeah. Then why didn't you say something earlier, you silly Billy, when I could have used my powerful prayers to heal you? Well, I tried to say something many times, but... Hush now, you need medicine, Pastor Munch. We have to get out of here. Well, I think you tried to pretty recent, but it didn't work. That's right. I've been working so hard for so long that I lost my Halloween spirit and begin to forget things, like how great I am. Yes, Miss Weaver, and I forgot important things too, like... Okay, okay, I'm thinking here. About how to escape? That's right, we're busting out of here, tonight. But <coughs> what about the guards? You know them straw mans are... No match for the members of the first expired church of Colonel Holler. So we're busting out? Exactamundo! Pastor, how do you feel about deception and physical confrontation? I'm pretty nervous. Here's what we're gonna do. Y'all got any candy? <laughs> oh, Pierre, you have a marvelous way with words. Truly, you paint pictures with your words that rival your real paintings. A toast to Pierre St. Dare. I don't want no toast. It's night time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be going on a while. He sure does love holding court. Hey, do you see that construction fence over there? That's it, right? Look, there's a sign. Future site of Creepy Corners Resort. Pardon our dust. No, pardon my dust, hoss. I'm about to get up under this fence. It's fairly flimsy. Don't mess up Antoine's shoes. They look pretty nice. Well, you better hold up the train of old Kale Summerlin's long dress as you duck up under this fence here. It looks like it would make for a devil of a dry cleaning bill. Uh, so rooster has got it all laid out. He has literally plotted out every little square of our town. The town square over there. That way is houses. That way is the park. Look at the empty building sites. They all match this map in the investor's packet. Hmm. I notice my daddy has a place on this map for both the stadium and the library. Meaning he has no intention of letting us keep any of our town despite what he said in that stupid caretaker scroll. Of course. Am I surprised? Nope. This does pain me to see Miss Von Wingenkamp. Say what you will about my villainous past, but I always did love Colonel Holler with all the capacity of my black little heart. We all feel considerable fondness for our spooky little town. Do you think we can save it? We gonna get everything back to how it's supposed to be. Have some faith in yourself. Do you hear that? Sounds like somebody's boohooing some awful big tears up at the top of that building over there. That building? Crap, it's the boutique. Aww. I think the sound is coming from the turret. That's Rochester's room. Ugh, I'm sad and mad. Who on earth is up at the top of y'all's boutique crying like they ain't got a friend in the world? Hmm, let's find out. must compose yourself, Chip Clearly. I cannot explain if you will not allow me the opportunity. What's there to explain? You want to turn my friends into straw people. It's ridiculous. And don't you try to deny it, neither. 
We done heard it straight from you good time buddies. How this place ain't nothing but a prison and everybody in here gonna forget everything they know but them country rock critters. That's what we heard. Oh, hang that cryptopher in his fog machine mouth. I can't believe you want to change everybody here because why? They're easier to boss around or something? Yes, you see? You understand already. You might think of the straw man as a company uniform, a way to promote unity between labor and management. See, now that's just like a bad singer, a evil thing to do. Straw man, spider, lightning bug, what difference do appearances make? No one has any say for their form and curdle holler to begin with. And given time, Chip, I think you will come around to my way of thinking. Then you don't know me at all. You have to promise me you'll drop this idea right now, or we're not frenemies any longer. I'm sorry, Chip. The spell has been cast. Hang uh, on uh, a minute. Now I know I ain't just hear that. Mm -mm. You noted that our workers seem more resigned than usual. Well, their sinews are stiffening into bristles to sweep out the old and let in a new era of industry. Roosterfer, you better turn this around or you gonna get a taste of my slime pistols. Squirt and splurt. I named them just now, just for you. Now what you gonna do? My friends, what I've begun cannot be undone. Oh my God, how soon is this gonna happen? Well, for these people to miss Halloween, they would lose what remains of their Halloween spirit. So I figure most would become straw men tomorrow at midnight. Tomorrow? Listen, Mr. Batsinger, it's not just a coincidence that everybody in town is what they are. Surely you notice that we're like this for a reason. Ronnie Roach loves garbage. The collector can't let go of anything. And I'm the invisible man because I wanted somebody to see me. That's right, and I'm a skeleton cause, you know, bad to the bone. I think it was wrong for me to come here. Now Chip, don't be impetuous. There's still room to talk and so much opportunity. We have a rapport. No, you never wanted to talk. You saw me as a tool. Well, tool no more, except yes, I am a tool, a leveler, and me and my friends are going to level the playing field. Now me and Chipperoo gonna bid you adieu. Will you try to stop us? Why bother? I can see you have chosen another path, another future. In fact, I would like you to warn your red carnations to do right on Halloween. Don't do nothing wrong behind the barn. Nothing that would complicate my plans in any way. That would be unwise. Come on, Sheriff. We're out of here. I don't remember if I said, but this is the worst picnic I ever seen. Hello? Is someone up there? The doors and windows are all locked. We can't get inside to help you. No, no. It seems as though our phantom boohooer is tooting some kind of whistle at us. That's unusual. Yeah, that's a new one. Um, so the sounds are coming from the turret window, which has a huge crack in it. If one of us could shimmy up the trellis and onto the porch roof, we may be able to get in. Well, now, I'm not much for shimmying. Laws, I do miss my own body. I could flap my way up there in a zip if I had my chiropter in form to pile it around. Okay, well, I would do it, but how do I say this, Antoine? You're a lot smaller than I am. Antoine does seem to have a wiry nature to his build. Old Kale Summerlin is a towering Amazon in comparison. Uh, yeah, why don't you stand on my shoulders and climb up? I bet you could fit through that window crack. It's huge. Rochester won't repair it because he is a weirdo and likes the night air. Meanwhile, everybody else in the house is freezing their keisters. Yes, yes, Miss Von Wangenkamp. I will proceed to climb up that trellis if it will aid and abet the end of all talk about your household's keisters. It's a deal. Easy does it now. <laughs> all right now, Cal Summerlin. We don't want any harm to befall Antoine's keister now. Just climb! Laws, it seems all I do these days is try to wiggle my way through tiny little windows. Who are you? Don't hurt me. <gasps> mm -hmm. All right. Now, now, fella, I'm a friend. 
ignore my Earthman appearance. I'm from Kirtle Hollow. I can tell by your scarecrow visage that you are too. Where everybody go? Don't like it here. Good sir, I do not have the foggiest clue why you are a tootin' that whistle at me, but I assume you have a good reason. I blow my whistle. My helper men come to me. Many, many helpers. Oh, you're one of them company holler straw men. I see. Not one of them. Foreman. The boss of them. Well, I hate to break it to you, Brother Foreman, but you are hardly the boss of anybody when your whole life is dictated by the man. I know this better than anybody. My daddy happens to be the one pulling the strings over there. Not that I claim that poison old piece of fruit leather. He made a soup here, but he leave me by self. Can I get up? You can't get up? Are you hurt, Foreman? Well, let me look. Oh, I see. This is your stuffing scattered on the floor. You like a big old tick mattress with a hole in it. Sorry if I offend. You helping me? I'm putting this straw back in your shirt collar, if that's all right. Yeah. I noticed you ain't tooted your whistle here in a hot second. I hope that means you can tell. I mean you no harm. Yeah, no harm. Whistle makes straw men come help. Whistle help will work, but whistle not working here. No, sir, I reckon it's not. Your fellow straw men are all over in Kirtle Hollow. Now look. Is it okay if I patch you into shape a little bit? I think I about got all your straw. It don't hurt you none now. It okay. Belfry, if you have not been killed, please say so. I ain't killed. Do you think you can stand up and show your face to my lady friend down on the ground out here? I think she might be concerned about you too. Yeah, I can stand. Uh, here you go, pal. I got you. I better now. You so kind. You can't know this, Foreman, but I believe you are the first person who has said that to me in several hundred years. Do you think you can walk down these stairs? I can get you back home if you want to go. You help me. You take this. You want to give me your straw man whistle? You sure about that? You help me. You a friend. Thank you, Foreman. I think the lady downstairs is going to be very interested in this whistle. I know I helped you, but... Looks like you might be helping us too. Let's get on back to Colonel Holla. attention. Now come on, Pastor, you're doing fine. Forgive me, Grand Supreme, but I need to <coughs> leave this stinky old mind and what I do, <coughs> I do for your glory and my freedoms. And what problem here? Well, Mr. Strawman, we've been working real hard and <coughs> I'm pretty sick and my onlyest wish is to taste web shooters, you big straw creep. Sorry, straw brother. Please come to church on Sunday if we still have a town. Huh. We made it, Pastor. The outside. I knew we could do it because most of the straw people were on picnic cleanup duty, which I must have planned subconsciously from the beginning. Do you hear him, Miss Weaver? The even song of church bells rings through the street. That means Peaches must have kept the church going in my absence. Ah, your fever's getting worse, Pastor. Good job, Peaches. Miss Weaver, is that you? Chip, Sheriff. Miss <laughs> Weaver, how did you guys escape? No time for that, Chip, clearly. We have to start a rebellion right away. Way ahead of you. Welcome to the rebellion, Miss Weaver. Hooray! <coughs> Mrs. Weaver, Chip about done lost his mind while you was gone, but don't you worry. I set him back on the straight and narrow. Well, I don't know about that. I find it spurious, to be honest. Well, I did. Chip's rebellion 
Chip, is everything okay? Tell me you haven't done anything that we would call a crisis. But Nina, I gotta tell you, you were right about everything. Uh... Nina? Sorry, Chip. I was just uh, storing that in my mind so I can replay it every day as much as I need to. What was that? A straw man. Uh, the foreman, actually. What? You know what? Just meet us at Mr. Goliath's house. We have a plan to take back the town and save our friends, and there's a small chance it will actually work. Okay, we should do your plan tomorrow, because after that, everybody turns into a straw person. Okay, Chip, dropping some bombs here. Uh, anything else you want to tell me? Bonita, my IBS come back. Uh, Tell her it come back. She gonna want to know.